next podcast, we're doing unconventional foods, and we are going to be featuring a liver ravioli recipe and a bone marrow recipe. And I'm doing bone marrow, and River will be doing the liver ravioli. So uh, we kind of switched parts, and we did. I did research for the liver, and he did research for the ravioli, so then we could like educate each other and get homeschooling in there too. And this is my diagram slash research page on the liver. And I just do a little stick guy and put the, where the liver is located. It actually is the largest organ, which I actually didn't know. And uh, it's always located on the opposite side of your heart. So usually, well, always, it's on the right side of your body. And it actually just sends all of like the bile and bad stuff to your gallbladder. So you're not eating chemicals and whatever you're eating that goes into the liver. And uh, it also can regrow if you cut a little snippet of, of it off. And so like, let's say you're doing a donation and someone needs that part of your, the, of your liver, then it'll regrow, but it takes a long while. But, um, and yeah, that's about it. This is just a cool diagram that we did. And yeah, River, how about yours? Okay, so as you know, I did the bone marrow. And so I've got a picture of a bone and like yellow marrow is kind of something inside of the mm. bone. And then the red marrow is kind of like up here a little mm. bit. Joint. And the, yeah, and the joint bone. And uh, since I'm going to be using cow marrow, not person marrow, um, this is a picture of the cow. And the bone marrow is basically mostly in like the leg and arm bones, not really like the rib bones or anything, or the tail bones, or the skull. And it's found within most of the bones. Um, red marrow makes blood cells, so like, we make the blood cells and the blood cells will go to all the parts of the body that you need them. So like if you scab your knee, then a bunch of red bone marrow is gonna make blood cells to go to you, help your knee out. And um, Yellow marrow is the stuff that you usually eat. It is fat storage and it replaces the red marrow as you age. So like if you're like 97, you're gonna have more yellow marrow than you are gonna have red marrow. And yeah, and that's my name and the date that I did this. While I'm sorting these sprinkles, uh, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about camel's milk. So camel's milk is a lot like the hump fat in the way that it has a lot of vitamins and it's just very nutritious all around and better than other normal milks. And uh, it's really good for your joints. A lot of milks are, but this one's pretty spectacular. And it has a lot of uh, collagen and it just it just tastes really good. So <laughs> yeah, it's really good and it just helps a little. Camels also, uh, if you didn't know this, they actually originated in the Arctic. And that's why there are uh, fat in their humps because it used to keep them warm, kind of like how whales have blubber. It just keeps them warm. And they migrated to the desert, so they still have the fat in their humps, but that's kind of cool because that's where they originated. If camels get dehydrated, and their uh, humps will kind of flop over. It's kind of like flump. And then uh, that just usually means that they're either sick or dehydrated. So that's just kind of a cool thing. Camels. And they're also yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Just watch your candles, your pet candles, yeah. huh? <laughs> These are some lovely cow bone marrows from Balcampo Meats, and they make really good meats. So I'm really excited to try these out. And our dad is actually going to teach us how to make them because he made it actually a few days ago. So it'll be fun because we haven't actually had him in a lot of podcasts. But uh, the bone marrow is a very good source of collagen because collagen is from the bones and this is basically a bone. And it also helps a lot with your joints because bones, joints, it just makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, we're really, I'm really excited to start making this. Let's get started. Well, hello, Taryn. Hello. <laughs> so I wanna show you how to make what I call butter of the gods. Okay. Because bone marrow is considered to be much like it's nature's really butter full of <laughs> stem cells and tons of minerals, collagen. It is literally like nutrient soup hidden inside of these bones. And it kind of has a texture of butter. 
And so for this recipe, what we're gonna do is season this bone marrow, which is already split open, and so that will be step one. So what kind of seasonings have you selected for our bone marrow recipe? I've just kind of found a little simple and just chosen salt. Okay. Well, I'll show you how to do one, and then uh, you, can, you can do a few from there. So okay. what you'll do is you'll take your salt, and you know for bone marrow you don't need to rub as much as you just sprinkle on top for meat okay. normally you rub okay so you get some salt okay. and then you'll put some of your pepper on there okay. okay and you can just start as i show you you can start to do the others if you would like okay. and then what else have you selected looks like we have some nice rosemary that'll go yes. great rosemary is good with any anything beefy yeah and these are big old beef bones from uh, bel campo mm -hmm. Which uh, has, I think, some Amazing. of the some of the bestest. Yeah. Now, this also is a little bit of time, and I'll show you what we'll do with this time later on, because we're going to be doing yeah. something else with these spices as well. So while you're doing that, I'll help you out, and I'll just start doing the pepper as you do the salt. Okay. And um, and right now, as we're doing this, what's going on with that Traeger outside, Taryn? So we have started to warm it up to 200. And 50 degrees, mm -hmm. and we're just going to be putting those on for about an hour. Yeah, and the nice part about the Traeger is it's a smoking grill. So these are not only going to kind of cook at that low temp for the next hour, but they'll be smoking while they're cooking, which will lend some really nice flavor yeah. to this bone marrow. And yeah. bone marrow is wonderful. How do you like bone marrow, Taryn? What's your favorite? Way I like to eat it with a spoon. But it's just straight out with a spoon. Yeah, I just kind of like carve it out. I like to smear it on some mom sourdough bread. That's one option. Earlier this week, I actually had bone marrow and I uh, I put it on top of mushrooms, on top of sauteed mushrooms, which was really good. But do you know what's really interesting? I'll tell you a funny story. If you go to some steakhouses, they'll make something called a bone marrow shoot. And what happens is you dig all the bone marrow out and then they'll pour a shot of whiskey or bourbon down the hollow <laughs> shoot into your mouth. Okay, now before we put this bone marrow on, I'm going to show you one other thing that is really the reason I call this butter of the gods. So what we're going to do is we're going to take enough butter so that when we melt this down, we're going to be able to spoon it on top of each of these sections of bone marrow. Okay. And we're going to do that in the last 10 minutes of cooking. So after they've been on the grill for about 50 minutes, 50 minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to spoon almost the same. Do you know what, what the word is for when you're spooning butter uh, over meat? Close, ba basting. Oh, okay. basting. So we're going to baste this bone marrow during the last 10 minutes that's cooking. So about a half stick of butter will be enough for these six pieces of bone marrow. And we're going to infuse this butter. So that means that once these guys have been on for about 45 minutes, we will heat up this butter for about five minutes. And we're heating it up with thyme. Okay. To put a bunch of thyme in here. And we're also going to... And we don't have to worry too much about stripping a lot of the herbs off the thyme because it's, okay. it's just going to kind of infuse into the butter. And we don't need to use all this thyme. That's about enough there. We just want enough herbs. And it's nice because when you cook herbs in a cast iron skillet with butter, you lend some of that flavor yeah. to the butter. And then when this gets kind of spooned over the bone marrow, it'll be really, really fantastic. And then we'll put a pinch of salt. And why don't you put a few twists of black pepper in there too? Yeah. So really the butter is infused with just about the same herbs and spices, rosemary, salt, and black pepper as we do on the bone marrow. It's just a little bit of thyme added in. Perfect. So we're going to set this butter aside and then when are we going to turn the butter on? Uh, 10 minutes before. We'll turn on about 15 minutes before okay, 15 so that minutes. then it, once it's melted down at the 10 minute oh, mark, it'll be oh, ready yeah, to okay. spoon over the bone okay. marrow. Okay, so why don't you grab that bone marrow and follow me. Let's go. And it is perfectly heated to about close to 250. So what we're going to do is open this Traeger. And the next step is take each of these, and it's very simple. We just simply set them out just like this. This is such a simple recipe. People get a little bit intimidated by bone marrow or by weird cuts of meat, but this recipe is so simple. You literally just put the bone marrow on the grill and close the lid for 50 minutes. Then you open the lid again at the 50 minute mark and you spoon a little bit of butter over it. And then you let it go for 10 minutes and it's good to go. Now there's one trick. After you close that lid, if you want to get a shot of this beautiful bone marrow on there, you can before we close the lid. Mm, that's what the inside of the Traeger looks like. So we're going to close the lid and then one thing you'll always check because it's super disappointing if you run out of pellets halfway through the cooking process and don't remember. So open that lid 
I always want to make sure, oh, there's plenty of pellets in there. So we're fine as far as pellets go. And we can leave this dish out here to transport yeah. the bone marrow back in after it's cooked. And so now, do you think we should set a clock? We can set a timer right here. Okay. Or what's, well, we can press, an, you know what I like to do is, because I'm lazy, I just use my watch. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is set the watch. Boom. So in 45 minutes or so, we'll flip the butter on. Okay. And then in 50 minutes, we'll spoon it over and we will manja manja Yay. in style tonight with and butter grandma's. of the gods. Yeah, and mom's gardens. Awesome. <laughs> All right, for this next step, what we're going to do is go ahead and turn the butter to low to medium heat. Now that we're about 15 minutes out from that bone marrow being done. Okay. And what you want to do is as the butter is melting, you want to kind of stir and stir the butter so okay. that as it's melting, it's getting infused with the flavor from the herbs. And okay. so you'll stir this for anywhere from, you know, you don't stir it the whole time, but for okay. about the next five to 10 minutes or so. Okay. All you're going to do is just make sure that you stir the butter and that it doesn't get so hot it starts bubbling, okay? okay. You know, just kind of simmering. So what we're trying to do is time this so that once you turn the burner off, the butter isn't solid again before we go out yeah. and start spooning it over the bone marrow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Does it smell good? Yes. <laughs> mm. it smells like rosemary thyme. and thyme. So what we're going to do is just to make it easier to baste this, over the bone marrow, which we're about to head out to the grill to do. Best thing is to just use a spatula to transfer it to a smaller, more shallow bowl, just because it's a little bit easier to work your way around when you're out there at the grill. And uh, the next step is gonna be super easy. So if you follow us out to the grill, we'll show you what this looks like. All right, so we've got the uh, bone marrow out here now. It's been going and going for about 50 minutes. And what we do during the last five or 10 minutes that this bone marrow is on, and I'm gonna let you do this for each of these, Taryn, after I show you the first one. Okay. I'll, I'll do the tricky one here, the one that wants to sit a little funny on the grill. We'll, we'll kind of stack it up against this guy. Okay. That'll make it easier to base the butter on. There we go. All right, so here we go, ready? So we just do, this This is what makes bone marrow into butter of the gods. Just do a little bit of a base right there with butter, see that? Yep. So you just rinse, wash, and repeat with each of those pieces of bone marrow. You just spoon a little bit of butter over there. It's gonna lend it even more flavor. It's gonna saturate that marrow as it finishes up. Mm -mm -mm. Yep. And it's gonna be good. So what we're gonna do is we'll baste each of these sections of bone marrow yes. and then once that's done we'll close the grill we'll let the grill run for about another 10 minutes at that point you just pretty much pull these guys and plate them what do you think you excited Terry? yeah and if you have any leftover butter you can use it for other elements of your dish if you have some bread salad anything else you want to flavor up with that butter uh it goes great to cook eggs the next morning you name it you get a little herb infused butter Wow, looks good. Nice job. This one has okay. a lot of oil in it. Yeah. Already. All right, so we can close the grill. Go a little longer. We'll be about done. All right, so our final step here is see this button on the Traeger? Push yeah. that one and hold it, and it's going to automatically go into shutdown mode. Good. So that'll shut down. And then uh, a, tr a true chef uses their hands to take things off the grill because a true chef has super tough hands. So we're just gonna take these off one by one. And you kinda of hold them straight so you don't lose a lot of the butter coming out the top. Yeah. We're gonna arrange them on this cutting board. These are gonna taste so, so good after being on this smoker for an hour. I think we should have enough room exactly. If I move this guy down a little bit. For exactamundo seis. Yay! Mmm, beautiful. Our bone marrow is now finished. We had some last night, hot, and it was really, really good. It was like a gelatinous, like, yummy, beefy. It was like gold butter. Yeah, it was really, really good. But our dad said it was really isn't it, good. Isn't it called Butter of the Gods? Yeah, it is. I think, I think that they named that correctly. Yeah. So our dad also said it was really, really good cold. So this is the next morning, and it's, it's just been in the fridge all night. And we're just putting it on a few crackers since we like it better on something hard. And I got River to help me taste. 
Cheers. Cheers. Mmm, that's good. It's like flavorful butter. It's really, really good. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. really, really, really flavorful. Mm -hmm. It's good the second day. It is, but I do recommend putting it on something. Because I wouldn't, it's kind of hard. I actually like it better the second day because it's a little bit more like easy to spread and doesn't like go in your throat real flesh. That's yeah, good. And today we're going to be making liver pate ravioli. Yummy. And if you want to see some like more amazing, awesome, delicious podcasts and recipes, recipes then you can go to gogamefoods.com. And um, a little bit of like a fun fact. So ravioli was kind of invented by like the Italians. They had some leftovers. Or like, pasta was. <laughs> they're like, they had leftovers and they're like, mm, this could go well in like pockets, like made of pasta. So they put it in and they call it pocket pasta. Pocket pasta. So it's like leftover pocket pasta and it's really, mm -hmm. really good. And I guess someone thought of liver, so here we are. Cool and ingredients today. Yeah, we've got some really fun ingredients. We've got nuts that I forgot. Pine pine nuts, that's that's the pine nuts. Yeah, they look like pine nuts. Um some fresh basil, basil, eggs, onion, organic onions, organic. cabernet sauvignon, dry wine, a little bit of salt, some butter. Capers, which also side note make you happy. And we've got some ricotta cheese. Parmesan Parm oregano cheese. Of and liver. Liver, the somewhat made ingredient. Anchovies. Oh, this is um, Bel Campo liver. It's chicken really, liver. Really, really good. Yeah. So if you want to get your own Bel Campo liver, then you can go to gogreenfields.com forward slash Bel Campo. And also we have some garlic, one basil for presentation, and uh, what's this again, Taryn? Cloves. I'm not good, very good with ingredients. It's cloves. <laughs> cloves. Also, these are very strong, so cloves are actually very, very strong. You never use more than like, well, it depends on how big your dish is, but you don't use that many of them. They're really strong. They don't look strong. They are. <laughs> They're weak. And flour for our pasta. Yay. So, Taryn is kind of like sort of a master pasta maker in what? a little bit of a way. So, he's what? gonna kind of he's gonna kind of show you guys and me how to make like a really, really good ravioli pasta. So, now um, we're gonna start soaking the liver in milk. And the reason we're gonna do it in milk is because the milk can like take out all like the bad stuff if there's any, but liver's pretty clean because it means like a filter. And it also takes away like the gamey flavor and puts in like a really, really good flavor. And with this much liver, we're just gonna use the rest of this milk. I'm not sure how much this is. I should probably measure it really quickly. Okay. Actually, you know, it's fine. Um, and so, here we go. We're gonna be using all of this liver. And this is one pound of chicken liver that we're gonna be soaking. And we're also using full raw milk. What is that? Oh, this is oh a sous vide BPA free bag. So yeah. And then we're just gonna soak this for a few, like for like about twenty four hours or overnight. So to start off our liver ravioli, we're going to be making a ricotta filling, which we are going to add into our liver pate for the ravioli. So what you're going to need for this filling is half a cup of grated Parmesan Regano, um, ricotta cheese, sheep's milk, sheep's milk or cow's milk, really doesn't make a difference, um, two cups, three large eggs, um, a quarter cup of toasted pine nuts, and the way you can tell if they're toasted is you basically smell them and they're a little bit more brown. And a quarter cup of fresh chopped basil. So it's a pretty simple recipe. All you gotta do is like literally add this. How did I miss that? All you have to do is literally add this all in together. Wait, there's some pine nuts in the bottom of this. Yeah, 
Butterfingers today. And yeah, what? I'm gonna use flashlight for this one. Okay. it all together. So now that we've finished our Wakoda filling, we are going to start on the liver pate. And a fun fact about liver is that it's actually the largest organ on your body. And for good reason, because it's like a filter, not like a car or pool air filter, but it's like a filter that basically destroys all the toxins and then shoots them out your body. So that's what, basically what the liver does. And if, if it gets like hurt in somewhere like, I don't know, like somehow this little, like this much gets like cut off or something, it can regrow really itself. But if you get like shot with a bullet, you will probably die before it can uh, regrow itself. So <laughs> anyway, now that you're, um, now I've been done talking about gory stuff, let's start cooking. So we're going to need onions, one small onion chopped, one cup of dry red wine, we're using Fit Fine, five cloves, these things are really strong, so you only need one, two, three, four, five of these. Now I'm just gonna put these right there, and we'll use it. Um, kosher salt, two anchovy fillets. Also, I don't, why do people not like these? They're like delicious. Um, capers. Uh, this is one tablespoon of capers, um, one pound of chicken livers, or just one pound of cow liver, It, um, any liver really. This liver is chicken liver from Belcampo, and if you want to get liver from Belcampo, then go to gogreenfields.com forward slash Belcampo. And half a stick of butter, a ricotta filling, and fresh pressed olive oil, which is like the tastiest olive oil in the world. And uh, yeah, you can go to gogreenfields.com forward slash fresh pressed to get your olive oil today. And one of like the main machines we're gonna be using for this is the food processor. And I guess if you don't have one, you can use like a blender or a blender. And we're also gonna be sauteing some stuff, so you're gonna need a pan. So let's get started. We've been sauteing our onions Capers and um, what is it called? What make? What? Um, cloves, cloves, cloves. I got it. I knew it the whole time. Um, cloves. So now we're and we cook the onions till they're translucent. So now we're gonna add these anchovy fillets and this liver. And actually, a cool thing about the liver is we um soaked it overnight in um, milk. So that would take out any leftover toxins, so that liver would have much. And um, it also makes it taste less gamier and more delicious. So we're just gonna cook these till they're cooked, I guess. Mm. So, sorry. So now that the liver is done cooking, we are going to add half of the salt and the wine. And the way you know when liver is done cooking is like when you kind of like open it up and it's not like bleeding, I guess. And basically, we're going to be doing this till the wine is all gone, basically, and the livers are getting kind of dry. And then we're going to add in butter from Thrive Market. Thrive Market carry, Thrive Market carries carry gold, so. It's really, really good, and you can go to gogreenfields.com forward slash third market to uh, get some of your own tasty butter. Wow, kind of good spot, you know? So, we just finished transferring our um, liver, onion, caper mix to the food processor, which is now gone because I put it away. And we um, pulsed it for about a minute, just like checking on it. And uh, here's the final product. Um, and we'll show you how to put it into the ravioli with the ricotta filling. And another 
in a few minutes. Go. So now that we finished the ricotta filling and the liver pate, we're gonna start on the actual pasta part of the ravioli. Yay! Um, so we've got our pasta master right here, Taryn. Hello. And he's gonna show us how to make this pasta. Okay. So, pretty easy for the first part. You just take three cups of flour. Well, I know. I know the ingredients, yeah. you just make it. <laughs> and put it there. You just put this and pop it on the counter. Two. Three. Okay. And then this is the fun part. You basically make a little well out of the flour, as so. Yeah, this is the fun part. <laughs> Why do you need a well? That's where you put the eggs in, and sometimes you put oil in there too. That's where you put all your wet ingredients. Okay. Plappy plop. And then go the eggs. We're using four large eggs. Ten. What? This one's Ooh, really. No. This one's dippy. Ooh, mm -hmm. This one's dippy. I'm just gonna break it. Mm -hmm. What happens if the wall breaks? Then that's Wait. a problem. But you kind of, you just kind of got to like hold the walls up if it breaks in one spot. But what? Well, ours didn't break. So yes. Yay. Spanish. Actually, it was Italian. Oh, whatever, <laughs> same thing. Kind of. And then you basically. Mm. No. So now this is kind of a hard part. You gotta like whisk the eggs inside of the flour and making sure it doesn't spill out at the same time. It's really nice when you have someone to help you. Let's mix it. The dam is breaking. And now you just gotta gradually add. The flour in and then just Ooh. see then that's not supposed that's to not oh. like now after you've like scooped up all the flour into the well scoop -de -doop -doop. and now you can kind of go in with your hands and make some dough it'll be dry at first it's and cool. you kind of keep you getting it so and if you got if you it. made like, if you did it like too dry like we might need another egg we're not sure yet but you can add another egg and you can add another egg <laughs> this looks like phyllo dough I am Sandman. Good job, Taryn. You and Nicole are in the rainbow. It's okay, I'm on camera. Look at this thing. This is mine. Rock, paper, scissors. Wait, ready? Wait, I need to make scissors. That's not scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot, shoot paper. <laughs> Dang it. I feel like my hands is like caked in something. Yeah, it's like a glove. I can't even feel my hand. Yeah. How strange. We definitely have to clean the counters after this. So the next step to making a ravioli pasta is to wrap it in cellophane. pin. That's gonna to need to be a little bit bigger in my opinion, maybe. I think that's so okay. Ah, you're right. Um, mm -hmm. basically the reason you want to wrap it in cellophane, um, is, well, and you're going to have it sit for 20 minutes at room temp, is so the eggs can, like, soak into the flour a little bit, so you don't have, like, dry, non-sticky dough. So we just wrapped our pasta in cellophane for 20 minutes at room temp, and the reason you want to do that is because then the eggs get some time to, like, soak into the flour and make it a lot more, like, Stick togetherable, I guess. Is that a word? I don't know. Um, and then you can make really, really good pasta with it. I am rolling out the pasta now that it's rested for 20 minutes. And basically, I took half of it, cut it in half, and then cut it again. So I think I quartered it. And you want to kind of roll it out like this so it's a little bit thinner so you can actually get it down the pasta machine. And then I'm going to be doing this like, I don't know, like five times. So. Bear with me, and you're basically going from the widest mode of the pasta machine to the thinnest mode, second to thinnest. 
and yeah, it's gonna be fun. Okay. And you also gotta make sure it doesn't tear have too many loops in it. Oh, I'm just making little pretty imprints and pressing it down there make it stick. They look pretty imprints. They do look pretty. sent it to us. <laughs> it's a magic spoon, so it's really, really It's a magic awesome. spoon spoon. <laughs> so this is, we basically, this is kind of like a edible glue. It's just eggs. It's like just one egg mixed together. That's what you use to glue it. I used a little too much. You don't want it that much. Yeah, don't, don't, don't do what I'm doing. But, and then you just it down like this and it glues it down really nicely. And you take a little handy dandy fork pattern thing here. It's a handy dandy fork pattern. All your padding needs. Um, so we finished doing like all the, we finished the pastas and here they are, here's an example. Well, they look really good. And we're basically waiting for this water to boil. Make sure to put a pinch of salt in the water to um, help it boil. And then we're just going to plop that in for three to four minutes or until it floats to the top. But right now we are doing some liver pate inside of like this little cup. I'm not sure what this is called, but yeah, that thing. And um, we're also using like a lump of butter in there. Or, um, and we're just going to basically use it as like a sauce for the liver ravioli. To put on top? Mm -hmm. Hey, look at Rose. Okay, so that means it's done when it rises like that. And so now we're just gonna try to use like a spoon with holes in the bottom of it so all the water can drip out so you don't have like wet rubber because that's nasty. And then this magical floating bowl over here is going to put the ravioli in it. And then. And I've got Taryn, this guy here, <laughs> who will be tasting with us. So yeah. Let's try these out. They look pretty good. Water fork. No, I'm okay. okay. Finger food. <laughs> Have some parmesan cheese. Mmm. <laughs> ricotta goes really, really well with the liver. Mm-hmm. Like you can, you taste the liver at the start. And it kind of fades away and the ricotta comes in. Yeah, and the pasta is pretty good cooked. And Terry really, really likes things. it. Mmm, it is. So today I am making some chocolate sugar cookies with chocolate chips inside them. If you've watched previous episodes, I don't really like chocolate, but uh, my family does, so I'm making this for them. And you also might be thinking, since this is called unconventional foods, how are chocolate cookies unconventional? Well, we are using hump fat. <laughs> and hump fat is basically the fat from a camel's hump. If you don't know what a camel's hump is, it's the two things in the back of a camel. If you look at a picture of a camel, they have the big bumps on their back, and that holds all their fat. So this is the fat from the hump. And hump fat is really, really good for you. It actually has a really good stability with cooking because if, if you cook other oils at a high heat, they'll start smoking, which leaves off a lot of the nutrients, but this takes a really long time to smoke, so it keeps a lot of the nutrients when you're cooking with it. And it also has a really cool vitamin called B12, which helps with your skin, your hair, your stomach, your immune system, it just does a lot of stuff. 
and this has about 40% of your daily need of B12. So that's pretty good. And it also has fatty acids, which basically help you burn fat, muscle growth, immune system, your stomach. That helps a lot too. And that has a lot of fatty acids in it. It has three times more than olive oil. And yeah, it's pretty good. And we are going to be using some of that. The only problem with this is that it does have a very strong like lard taste. And since we're doing cookies, we're also kind of looking for a sweet. So we're going to be mixing it with butter just so we can get a good uh, balance. And we are also going to be using some coconut flour and some almond flour, which are available at Thrive Market. We can go to goganfields.com forward slash Thrive Market to get some of your own. And we're going to be using an egg at room temperature, that's pretty important, and just some sugar, and some vanilla and honey, of course, chocolate, lots of chocolate, and got some salt, and some baking soda, and that's about it, let's get started. Now we're going to melt our hump fat down along with our butter. Just to get a good balance, we're gonna be using three tablespoons of hump fat and one teaspoon of hump, so basically three tablespoons and one teaspoon of hump fat, and two tablespoons of butter. And we're just gonna melt this down. Second. Just for a little flair, just for fun. I'm just gonna take out all the red and white sprinkles. I know this giant plate sprinkles. And uh, so, cause I think the red and white look really good on chocolate. So I'm just gonna put those on instead of just dumping different colors on. <laughs> you, are, you are patient, I'd be like. <laughs> and this is what it looks like before, before we yeah. chill it. So this is what it looks like before we chill it. We're just gonna let it sit for five minutes, just let it harden up before we put it into a disc and put it in salting and put it in the freezer for 30 to 45 minutes. So yeah. That's okay, there's a ton out there. Yeah. Plus, it's pretty easy to harvest, really. Yeah, it's just two lots of colors. It's okay. <laughs> Last little bit here. You can have some if you want. Is it you just making like one giant cookie? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the disc. You can then shape it later. After mm. shape it. Tastes pretty good. Yeah. You can like barely taste the little fat. Now I get credit for helping. Yeah. <laughs> so, now that we have finished, uh, cooling our dough for about 30 to 45 minutes. We are just gonna roll them into some balls and the oven is preheated at 350 degrees to cook them at. So that's what we're gonna cook them at. And we're just gonna roll it into balls. It's not very good cookie cutting consistency. You might, If you wanna do cookie cutting, you might wanna freeze it for a little bit longer than 45 minutes, like two hours or one hour. But uh, yeah, so we're just gonna make round cookies and then we're going to dip them in chocolate and we're going to melt the chocolate with a double boiler and I'm going to show you how to use that. And we're gonna to top it with some red and white sprinkles because those look really good on brown, I think, or just chocolate in general. So yeah. This is a double boiler. It's basically a pot with some water in it that is boiled and then you basically put a bowl in it and put some chocolate in it. And so, because you don't want it to be straight on hot metal or it'll burn, we just kind of want to steam it in a way. And I'm making a ganache, so I add a little bit of camel milk in here, which is really, really good. And also, since it's an unconventional food podcast, you can't use normal milk. So, yeah. <laughs> And I'm just not gonna decorate this one because I don't know if you'll be able to dip them after like there's chocolate and sprinkles on them. Camel milk. By Desert Farms. Yeah. Mmm. That's good. That's really good. I can see it being better with like a snickerdoodle or something, but it's still really, really good with the chocolate. Mmm. The cold goes really well too. Thumbs up! For our cookies, yeah, as you can see, I just dipped this in some of the chocolate ganache and it can just put some sprinkles on. I think that it looks really cool. Oh, yummy. Thank you for watching our unconventional food podcast. It was really, really fun for us and it was I hope you guys liked it a lot too. Was, I hope it was fun for you guys to cook and stuff like that. And if you want to see more amazing podcasts, amazing recipes, 
uh, you can visit our Instagram page or gogreenfields.com and we have a Facebook page. There's a Facebook page for that one too. So bye! Bye! Ciao, ciao! Thanks for listening!